What's up, everyone? I'm going to spend some time talking about hope in the Bible. That's what this season's about. We're in Advent series. So as we look back to the old and look forward to the new of Christ coming, this is what we're going to be talking about today and Where Life Exists. Welcome to a podcast about disciple making in the public square, where we talk about everyday issues from a biblical and balanced perspective. This is where life exists. This is Where Life Exists, where we talk about everyday issues from a biblical and balanced perspective. My name is Dahadi Lewis. I am a lead pastor of Blueprint Church and the vice president of the Sin Network. And today we are talking about hope in the Bible. Whoo! That's a lot easier to talk about hope in the Bible than some of the other stuff that we've been talking about in this last series and this season. And so, but this is Christmas season. So we had to get a little bit more festive, a little bit more, you know, cheerful and talk about things that we like a little bit better. We're talking about hope. Hope is something that we all live on. We all strive on, you know, and we all kind of live for. We want to a reality. We are hoping for something that we don't yet have. But sometimes hope can also be a burden. That is for another time and another day when we are going to be discussing with Chip Dobb. So today I'm going to lay a foundation talking about hope in the Bible. Hope specifically in his first coming. I think this is really critical. You know, we're in this series called The Advent and, you know, actually we've been talking about what it looks like to be an Advent. There's all so many texts. Many people are preaching on the Advent series. You know, they have different series that manifest itself in the different ways. But where does this idea of hope really that we're talking about come from? And I think we see that all throughout the scriptures, really, because Christmas is not the only story that talks about or gives us this message of hope. It is the pinnacle of it all because unto, unto us a child is born. And we know that child, his name was Emmanuel. But there's other places in the Bible that gives us this message of hope. So where do we find that in the Bible? Let's start off with the Pentateuch. Did you know that the Pentateuch was written as an encouragement to the next generation, as an encouragement of hope? Moses is at the end of his life and is trying to encourage Joshua and the Joshua generation to walk into what their parents weren't willing to do. We got to understand what God was doing in that time. 40 years, they're wandering in the wilderness. During that time, Moses is writing the Pentateuch encouraging when we have been faithless, God has and is faithful. And he is trying to encourage them through that message of hope. So when you look at the first five books of the Pentateuch, those are messages of hope to a generation to do what they were not willing, their previous generation was not willing to do. The next 400 years, this idea of God being with us. You guys remember, what was the message Emmanuel, right? This is a message that, that's talking about the burden of hope. Do you guys realize for over 400 years, we saw this tension that 400 years and even 2,000 years before that the message of hope through Isaiah, um, you know, we see it in Isaiah 40, 31. We see it in Isaiah chapter 9. We see it all throughout this idea that what this hope does. But what we see in these passages, like in Isaiah 40 and 31, is that hope leads to strength. Right. But we also see in First Thessalonians chapter one and three that hope inspires endurance and perseverance. Right. We see in Psalms 16 and nine that we can rest in this hope that we have and different sections, different periods compel us to maintain the burden of hope. Hope And it's an encouragement to stay in it. And what we see is that Advent and Christmas reminds us to stay with it, to press in, to hold on. That the fact is, is that he has come and guess what? He will return. And this is so critical for us to make sure that we are embracing this hope hope that he has. But if you recognize that in these series, you know, for these days that we are spending time talking about waiting in prayerful expectation for 
his coming. That's what they were doing for thousands of years in the Old Testament. And now we look for thousands of, you know, for thousands of years and we don't know, but we're holding on for hope for his second advent, his second coming. And it's the Christmas season that reminds us of that. So what do we see the hope in the second coming that we see in the Bible? Let's look at Revelation. Did you know that Revelation is a book that's about hope? The hope that the burden of hope that one day we will come receive his him coming back. We will receive him as our king. That when we oftentimes you see people quoting Revelation 5, Revelation 7, every tribe, tongue, nation, all sitting, worshiping our God. That these are messages of hope. It's meant to give us hope in a dark land. Remember, life is all about the darkness, but the message of hope that we have in darkness. And this is why we oftentimes refer to Revelation 5, Revelation 7, and we will be the one people um, once he comes back in his return. So we got to do that. But not only do we got to understand the Bible, the book of Revelation as hope, but we also got to know our hope. Ephesians 1 and 18. This is what Paul's prayer to the church at Ephesus, that he says this, he says, I pray that your eyes, that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened so that you may know what is the hope of his calling. What is the wealth of his glorious inheritance in the saints? This is the very essence that we need to embrace in understanding the hope of our Lord and Savior. That, and this is what Paul prayers that he's pressing into us that we would know his hope, this, that we would secure our foundation in this hope, but and we would live in the tension and the burden of this hope. But we know that even in that, that we need to hold on to that hope. We can have hope, but it's not a one-time thing. We've got to hold on to the hope. Hebrews chapter 10, 23 tells us that. It says, let us hold on to the confession of our hope without wavering, since he who promised is faithful, right? He is faithful. He will return. He has laid us, he has given us a security deposit called the Holy Spirit that indwells, but he doesn't take us out of this wicked world immediately. So in the midst of this wicked world, we have to hold on to hope. We got to hold on to his promise that he will return. And that is as good as his character. And we know as believers, his character is spotless. It's without blemish. And that's why we can trust in that and we can hold on to that hope. But it's not only just simply holding on, surviving. We can actually rejoice in the hope right? Rejoice in the hope. And this is what Paul tells us in Romans chapter 12 and 12. It says, rejoice in hope. Be patient in affliction. Be persistent in prayer. Now, it's one thing to say I got to hold on to hope, but it's another thing to rejoice in hope. And I really think that we are able to rejoice in our hope when we really keep our eyes to Jesus. And that kind of takes us back to the Isaiah chapter 9 passage, 9 and 6, when Isaiah, in the midst of Israel's destruction and the pending destruction of Judah, Isaiah says, listen, unto us a child is born, a son has been given, and he says he will be wonderful counselor. He will be um, a mighty God. He will be an everlasting father. He will be the prince of peace. He will bring about shalom. And that, brothers and sisters, is something that is worthy to holding on to, worthy to rejoicing in, worthy to understand that the present affliction that we have today, we can look to the hills from which our hope comes from, and we can rejoice, that we can have joy, in the midst of our pain, because of not of recognizing, not just silver lining what's currently going on, but we can know, we can look to the hills in which our Lord and our Savior comes from. And that's what this Advent series is about. That's what that this idea of bearing the burden of hope and seeing hope in the Bible is to give us strength to live for the next day. So I hope that we will press in, that we won't let this... Christmas season, this Advent season just kind of come and go. But all that 2020 has given us is that we would press in to the hope that you and I have in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And if you don't have a hope in our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray that you would reach out to someone and that you would come and say, Lord, 
I need you. I want you into my life that I've, that I've been putting my hope in, in my confidence in myself, but I want to give it for a hope that's laid up for me in heaven. It has already been purchased. It has already been paid by the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I really hope that you would embrace the personal work of our Savior, Jesus. So, Again, brothers and sisters, Merry Christmas, and I hope you have a happy new year. And this is where life exists, where we talk about everyday issues from a biblical and balanced perspective. Um, I love you. I appreciate you. Until next year.